Hey, you guys. How's things? Uh, okay, I finished the uh, the music the music hour books that I actually started quite a while ago. Um, the a lot of that a lot of what's in these is similar to the hardcover journals that I just had like a week and a half two weeks ago. Um, I just wanted to sort of finish these a little bit differently since they're such beautiful beautiful books. Um, I just wanted to give them a little bit of special treatment, if you know what I mean. And I wanted to add some stuff to them um, different than what I did with the other ones. Sometimes I have things that I want to put into my journals, but I don't have enough of it <laughs> to, you know, um, to spread out over, you know, if I'm doing like 12 journals or 20 journals or something, sometimes I don't have enough of a particular thing to split out, um, you know, that far. But um, since I only had five of these, I thought, okay, I can kind of go go all out and and just use some stuff. Mostly the uh, mostly the ephemera and stuff that I included with these. So anyway, so let's do um, a flip through. We'll actually, you know, kind of flip through all of them. Not completely, but um, <clears throat> I'll do a complete flip through on one and then and then we'll just peek inside the rest of them. OK, so we might as well look through the the first the first book. So these books are like a grade school music book. Um, I think they were published in 1915, something like that. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was something like that, like before 1920, I believe. Anyway, just gorgeous little books. And I was lucky enough to find a set. Uh, it was four books. Um, I was lucky enough to find a full set of them. I don't. I don't remember where I found them, but I did find the set of four, and then I had an extra um, third book. Okay, um, this the, this one is a little bit more a little bit more beat up than the other ones. The other ones are in really really good shape. I actually kind of like that. I like this oddball one. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool. It has more character. If you know what I mean. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and flip through this one. Um, so I did, <laughs> a lot of you guys commented that you loved those uh, drawer pull handle, you know, closures that I did on the last hardcover journals. And I wanted to use those on these also, um, but I don't know, I changed my mind. So I just went with the large hitch post closure on these with a with a piece of elastic that um, is expandable. These journals are pretty chunky right now because I've got this big pack of, um, of stuff inside of them, but I also did add some stuff into these, so they're, they're pretty chunky. Um, anyway, so the charms are a little bit different on each one. Let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm actually talking about. Um, so <clears throat> I had some just kind of special, I guess, pendants that I wanted to use on journals that I've just kind of been saving for quite a while. Uh, these are not vintage pendants. I, I believe these came from Hobby Lobby, but I think they're really cool anyway. So um, anyway, so this one has an owl on it. And then uh, just kind of, you know, sort of my, my usual style with beads and, and charms and stuff on some chain, on a piece of chain. And this is actually um, attached. This is a separate charm that is attached to that chain. Okay, so if you wanted to use this charm on something else or, or whatever, you could, you could totally do that. Um, I just think it's nice to, to make things removable from journals rather than having them tied on or permanently attached. So anyway, so I just thought, I thought that was kind of cool, but I wanted to add some other, 
some other goodies onto the onto the book charm. Um, and then this this uh, this whole thing is actually attached using a little just a little small book ring onto onto the jump ring here. Okay, so you can take this off also. I love, I just love making the charms and I don't know if I, if I made a journal and didn't put a charm on it, I think it would, it would be even more naked. Anyway, um, so these were actually rather thin books. So I did expand the spine to almost two inches and I just did, I just went ahead and did the stitching through the spine on these. Uh, rather than trying to <laughs> avoid the words like I did on those other ones. Um, but it's okay. I mean, you could still read it, you know. And this is just the way I like to bind my journals. People ask me sometimes why I don't do the hidden spine. And I guess it's just because this is just my way of binding journals. I just, that's just the way I do it. So, I don't know. I mean, I can, I know how to do it. I just, I don't know. For some reason, I just don't. Anyway. So, first thing, um, the pockets on the inside front and back are done with these beautiful embroidered, um, this was from a quilt. I got these in Happy Mail from somebody, and I cannot remember who it was. Um, it was quite a while ago, but I've been wanting to use these as just pockets in journals for a long time since I got them. Anyway, um, so I actually ironed these with uh, spray starch to kind of stiffen them just a little bit because um, <clears throat> they were, you know, they're, they're kind of almost threadbare a little bit, just kind of thin, but, um, but using just a little bit of spray starch kind of made them feel a little bit more durable. Anyway, um, so that's, that's uh, in the, um, on the front cover and the back cover. There's another, there's a purple one and a pink one. So I can't imagine how long it took that person to embroider all of those little baskets of flowers for an entire quilt. Anyway, um, so then inside the front pocket, you've got... Uh, I did I did a little card <laughs> instead of signing the actual journal I just went ahead and signed the little card I always forget that I have that stamp um, anyway so I did that and so anyway it's just a little just a little card and then each one has um, some type of saver stamp book or or pages from a green stamp book or something like that so just I just wanted to add some you know, authentic ephemera into these. So oh, here's another page of green stamps. Um, and then I included, I don't know, eight or ten of these little tags. There's some more in this bag, but <clears throat> I slipped some into the pockets. Um, I just wanted to give you things that you could add into your journal or, you know, like pocket type things that, you know, you could get creative with and then attach them wherever you want in your journal. There's another library card and then um, another Tunadex card. There's a couple actually bound into the journal. I think there's two more uh, of the double Tunadex cards in the journal. So, but I wanted you to have um, kind of a separate one. So anyway, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I think I'm just tired. I've been up. I've been up basically since five o'clock yesterday afternoon. So I haven't even been to bed yet tonight. <laughs> anyway, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So then um, I have this thing about old safety pins and paper clips. Uh, when I find them in like ephemera and stuff like that, you know, like a lot of that bank ephemera that I've had that I've used quite a bit of. There was lots of um, paper clips, so I've I just kind of stash them in this little container. Anyway, so I shared some of those paper clips with you guys in these journals, and then also safety pins. So Tim Holtz has put out some um, some kind of cool little mini safety pins that have some different patinas, and I really like them. I think they're neat. So 
anyway, so I just gave you a little bundle of uh, safety pins in your journal somewhere. And then some of his little... I, I have a love-hate relationship with Tim Holtz, but anyway, I love these little bulldog clips, those little teeny ones. Um, they don't hold as strong as I wish they did. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, but I think they're really cool. So, I mean, I just don't, I don't use them that often, but I did buy a few packs of them. So, so I shared some with you guys. So you get like five of them somewhere on a page, on a, on a page in the journal. Um, little charms on all of the tabs. Um, and I actually put the tabs in the book. So the reason that I actually, did, you know, decided to install the tabs in the book is because the spine or the cover is wide. It's wider, you know. I don't like to do that when the pages of the book actually extend out to the edge of the book cover <clears throat> because I just feel like they get damaged that way. But <clears throat> that's up to you if you want tabs on a book where the pages come all the way out to the edge. Um, because then you can fold your pages back or whatever anyway. Um, but these were these were nice. So I was able to add the tabs and put some little charms on them. And I used a lot of little vintage buttons, a lot of shank buttons. And um, most of them are mother of pearl. So And I think there's some ivory buttons in there too. I'm not sure which are which. But um, anyway. And then I used a lot of my, uh, I used up. I don't know if anybody remembers, I did like a video a while back and I was like washi everything because I was making all this like washi tape using carpet tape and I did a whole bunch with postage stamps. Uh, I had to actually wind up making some more um, using the just the score tape for that. But anyway, so I just used up some of that tape and... Um, a lot of my usual papers, onion skin, there's some graph paper, some other scrapbook papers, the French ledger. I chose some pages that were blank. And then the penmanship paper. See, here's a little Tunadex card in this journal. Some coffee dyed paper and then some larger like craft paper that folds out. I stitched in some pieces of... Um, a feed sack cloth that I got from one of these actually couple I got a couple of feed sacks from um, Patty from Patty Lang and then also I think I bought one from Rachel at Roxy Creations and then I think I also got a couple from Louise at uh, Forever French. So anyway, so I'm not sure where this comes from, but but thank you for, you know, providing those lovely green sacks. I love them. So anyways, just, just stitch some little pieces in here and there. And then I, I printed out a lot of the, um, the Eclectica kit that Tracy and I did together. And then somebody told me in the comments where this paper comes from. This is one of Tracy's also. Um, and I print it uh, borderless, so I'm able to get, you know, no border. Anyway, um, pen penmanship paper. This was like a kitchen, uh, like a kitchen planning book, but I love these little drawings and the little numbers. And I thought, I think this paper is cool where, it, where it's got, you know, if you take a, a spiral bound book apart and you get those holes, I like to keep those intact. Anyway, um, oh, this was the, um, what is that book called? I always forget what it's called. The Architectural, it's like an architect's, let me grab it really quick and show you in case you guys haven't seen it. If this is it, yeah. Architectural Graphic Standards. It's one of my favorite books to use because I love the the paper in it but um, anyway it's it's just it's just a really cool old book they still publish this book actually um, they put it they put a put one out every year anyway so it's for architects 
when they're doing their little drawings, you know. Anyway, <clears throat> book pages, of course, from uh, all of the school books that I've taken apart recently. I've used lots of those in here, too. I did try to add a little bit more music pages in here that came out of these books. Um, this is a different ledger. This is not French. It's just, I don't remember where it's from, but, um, and then, so here's a little card for your, all your paper clips and stuff that I wanted to share. Instead of, you know, paper clipping it onto the pages, I just went ahead and put them all on this little card. And then I did some of those, um, I think in this journal, yeah, this must be the one where I clipped, hold on, let me see. <laughs> Where'd they go? Can't find them now. Um, I clipped on these little guys. Anyway, these little corner things. Maybe I didn't put any in this journal. Hmm. I better find some. I better find some and put some in here because I don't see them. I thought I clipped them onto some of the pages in this journal, but as I look through it, I'll, I'll make sure. But anyway, so just look like a little assortment of paper clips. I had a couple of my little um, paper clips that I did with the buttons and the UV resin. Anyway, so with the, on the, that's on the big envelope. Um, what else? What else is in here? Let's see. I love doing this with the really big pages. I guess that's just one signature. Boy, I better hurry. And then I had five or six of these little, no, I should say I had eight or ten of these little pocket pages. So these came, I don't know where these came from, but they were probably just in a pack of stuff I got from somebody, like at the bookstore, I think. Um, anyway, Oh no, they were in a stamp album. That's what they are. They're for they're for stamps. Cause see, they're just these little these little pockets. Okay. Anyway, so there's nothing in there, but <clears throat> you could put stuff in there. And then some of those some of those cool um, amp like it ampere measurement paper or something. I can't remember how what it's what it was called exactly, but measures amps goes in some machine that measures amps and voltage or something anyway the the last of the city of pullman paper some reader old children's reader pages um some end papers some more of the eclectica paper and i used up some of the wrapping paper i uh, had purchased a bunch of books of wrapping paper on um, Amazon. Um, this is the French uh, ledger that came from the notary. Um, I love this one because it has all those numbers and stuff in it. And the writing is neat. I like how they wrote their numbers. I just like the way they write their numbers, especially the ones so that goes just like that. Anyway, um, a little bit of straw paper. Didn't have a ton of it, but there's at least, you know, a couple sheets in here. And more French ledger. I did some, some stitching, you know, just added in some little fabric bits here and there. Just fun stuff. Uh, I was playing around with trying to, use, so this is the only one of these journals that has one of these in it. But these are like card sleeves. I don't know, do any of you guys as kids play magic or do you guys play ma or collect magic cards? Um, but my kids are like crazy for magic cards. So they have these little slippies, they call them. They call them slippies. And this is for, well, for anybody who collects like baseball cards or anything like that, that's what these are for. So I was just playing around with using those in journals. I don't know. So anyway, this one got one stitched onto the page. I decided I didn't really like it that much, but I left it in there anyways. Um, some more wrapping paper. Some cool grid paper from Tracy. 
envelopes, an airmail envelope, some uh, vellum, more of the readers, different readers, a little paper bag, very much a writing journal. But as you can see, you know, I did, I did actually add in some stuff that is a little bit different. Um, actually a lot of stuff <laughs> that's different. I did some, remember I did all those flower washies. Um, I just had to use those somewhere. So I thought, well, this is as good a place as any um, to use them up. Some little pieces of embroidery, little flowers that I stitched onto the page there. Some more of the postage washi. This is from that really old um, typing book, uh, the new rational typewriting. If you go on eBay and search that up, um, you can find them sometimes. They're really nice old typing books. Some more of that notary ledger book. And then in this, in this envelope page, I just gave you some of those little craft paper bags, little tiny sacks. Those are, those are from Hobby Lobby. I just love these little paper bags. Um, and then one of these uh, pages from the Kodak book from Louise. Uh, it was a book that uh, where you would store your negatives. So I guess if you hadn't, if you just started watching my videos, I guess you wouldn't really know what I'm talking about. But this was a book that I got from Louise at Forever French. She lives, she lives in France, but she finds all kinds of really cool old French ephemera pieces and all kinds of books. And she's actually got some really nice like wall posters, like wall pieces, um, botanical prints that are in her shop, originals super nice stuff but she finds all kinds of French stuff like obviously she you know if, if I lived in France I'd probably find French stuff too right but <clears throat> I don't know like handbags and shoes and other kinds of French things too so anyway shabby chic types of things um, anyway so I did a couple of these little envelopes or these are like uh, book page uh, pockets that you know you would I mean, it's got pockets on both sides, so I wouldn't necessarily glue this down to a page, but it, they're kind of cool to just paper clip into your journal somewhere. Anyway, I made those a long time ago, but I thought they'd be kind of cool to just stick in a pocket. Um, okay, I'm getting <laughs> nothing else to talk about, I guess. <laughs> anyway, more wrapping paper, lots and lots of paper, just lots of paper, right? Um, I did, I used a couple of these pages, those AMP, I wish I knew what to call those, um, those little graph pages, because they're round, they're super cool. Anyways, they make really neat pockets. See, if you fold them in half and then in half again, they just make neat little pockets. Anyhow, I was going to add little charms onto the... Um, the strings in the center, but I didn't, I just ran out of steam. Couldn't do anymore. Um, okay, and then in the back pocket, pretty much, well, no, it's a little bit different stuff. Some, um, are these actual shipping labels? No, these are repair tags. And then this is actually a uh, wage envelope, like, you know, somebody gets paid in cash. Um, this is kind of like their little wage stub right there. And then this was for a photo album. It's got, oh no, these were big album pages is what these were. And I cut them down and stitched around the edges, but they're nice. They've got this piece of glassine, uh, like a glassine window. Um, a little alteration tag. How? This came, this was in a pack of flashcards, but it's that kind of like neat manila paper. Anywho, and some guest checks and a little divider. So just some stuff for you to journal on is in this back pocket. Okay, and then 
I did a collection of other stuff that was kind of fun. So some more tags. Like I said, I think there was like eight or ten of these little handmade tags that I did. I did most of this on camera. I think I, you guys saw a lot of those. Um, just a little, little envelope, you know, one of those little, um, those little tiny bags with just a piece of ledger and a little label. Um, some old, a uh, couple pages from a little notebook, some glassine envelopes. This is, a. Uh, this was some stationery that I got from Louise, also just the envelopes there. And then just some other little pieces of ephemera. This was from a lot of it's French stuff. Some of it, some of it's not, but a lot of it is. Um, these are just little bits of uh, French, like French banking documents, like from a bank. Uh, I think this stuff came from... Um, um, what's that other paper shop that I mentioned every once in a while? That's on Etsy. Can't remember. I can't remember anything right now. Anyway, and then this is just a little, like, calling card. A piece of that, um, this is copy paper. So it's, like, an original handwritten letter. It's a copy of it that was actually in a book that's bound. And, um, and that's in French. Kind of fun. Those are really neat to use for collaging. And then I just tried to put together things that would be fun for collage or that I just thought were special, you know. Like this is just like a little agenda from France. Um, a little... Is this the one? Is this one... This might be one of the ones that I got from Rachel. I had, I needed five of these <clears throat> and I only had four. And so Rachel had actually sent me a little bit of happy mail from Italy. So I think this might be the one from her. <laughs> anyway, so thanks Rachel. <laughs> so one, one uh, Italian bank check, bank note, and then the rest of them got a French one. Anyway, so just random, just random ephemera pieces. This is from the, uh, the Seattle National Bank. A lot of this stuff is, I acquired a whole huge collection of bank, you know, paperwork from like 1910 through about 1914, uh, local bank. So that's kind of fun to use. Um, anyway, so I just tried to give you a good selection of things that would be good to use in collage or just I don't know, just neat, pretty handwriting and things like that. So I love like the different letterheads and stuff and different examples of handwriting. You know, a lot of this stuff is French, but um, like this, this one, I love these little stamps and things. And then I put uh, this, these are from Louise also, these little envelopes. And these were... I don't remember the year. I don't remember what she told me. Anyway, um, but they all have a letter in them. Some sort of letter. A lot of them I haven't even looked at. So 1941. So these are the, le the letters dated 1941. So these were from early 40s. Anyway, let's try to get that back in there <laughs> okay most of them have a handwritten letter that one was some kind of business correspondence but um, most of them is just like a very very small little handwritten letter um, I took a page out of one of the agendas that I bought from her um, again don't remember the year on this one but this is, this is from the Bank of Lind. It's a little piece of French, um, like a, um, a sales slip from a liquor store. Oh, I remember, I remember her saying that she had a bunch of stuff from a liquor store. Um, some other French banking documents. 
I have this little book. This was actually a uh, like a school book, like a, like a French school book, and um, it must have had like like where you would fill in the fill in the blanks in sentences or something. Because the bottom of this is perforated, and but the book was like this big, and this was all that was left in the book. So it must have been like you would tear off the sheet that you did that day and turn it in or something to your instructor. But because this was all that was left in there. So it must have been like you would use these words in the worksheet that was attached, but none of the worksheets were there. It was just this anyway. Um, and then some other like larger, this one is uh, from Paris um, as is this one. So these are like bill of sale type of things. Bills of sale. <laughs> okay, so quite a little collection of ephemera type stuff that you can use in your journals or whatever, however you want to use it. And I did photograph each collection of ephemera. Um, for each listing because each one is different. I mean, I didn't like photograph it in detail. I just kind of spread it all out and then just took one photo. But um, <clears throat> so each pack is different, obviously. And then I just kind of have it tucked in between two signatures. Uh, try to get everything over to the right hand side and then just tuck it in there. So you can see like it's pretty chunky the way it the way it is. Um, so I'll just really quickly, I'll show you guys. So, oh, and then I gave these guys names. Okay. So <laughs> this is Stella. Her name is Stella. Okay. This is the first book. I love the two little kids on the front. And, but I like the nature theme too, like the little birds and the trees. Uh, so that's Stella. And then this one is Marion. And you can see she's got the... And I just left, like, if there was threads hanging off, I always just leave that stuff. Um, I can't forget to put those little clips in. Dang it, I hope I don't forget to do that. I gotta make myself a note. I, got, I didn't see the clips in that one, so I gotta make sure I do that. Um, anyway, for that fold over, the fold over ones. All right, so so here's uh, who did I say this was? Marion. Yeah. Anyway, so you can see they're very similar. So these are the clips I'm talking about. See these little fold over ones, and that's how you would you you would like attach a little bundle of pages together with it. And then these are little page flags too. These are like from the '60s. So anyway, I thought those were pretty cool too. So, and then little tiny paper clips. Like, I have this thing about little dinky paper clips. So, anyway. So, this one is very similar, obviously. See, like, here's the, here's the little bulldog clips on that page. So, when you get your journal, you know, make sure and take all this stuff off. But because I don't want it to come flying off. But I just wanted to attach it temporarily. And then, so I'm not going to go through each bag of ephemera. So you'll have to look on the on the listings to see, you know, what if you're you know interested in what's in the bag, okay? And then this this journal has this really cool little little bee charm. Well, I guess it's a pendant, but I'm calling it a charm. It's like a like a uh, like a honey bee, okay? And then. There's the detachable charm, too. Well, they're both detachable, but this charm detaches from that charm, and then the whole thing detaches right there. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so that's Marion. And then I'm not going to open all of these. You can see them on the listing. But this is Eleanor. Very similar inside. And then Eleanor has this really cool dragonfly. And... There's the rest of the of the charm has has an E for Eleanor. I, that was totally not that was totally an accident. I did not do that even on purpose. 
Um, so if your name starts with an E, this is your journal. I'm <laughs> just saying. Um, anyway, so that's Eleanor, and she's the third book in the series. This is the um, this is the one that came in the set. Okay. Oh, and did you guys want to see the spines? That's how the spines turned out. And then this is the fourth book. So this is Opal. And Opal has this really cool little, um, it's actually like a little owl, kind of like a filigree owl. And it's a, it's like a, like a poison ring, you know, it's like a locket. Okay. So it opens up. <laughs> You could put your poison in there. So. <clears throat> and this one happens to have an L for some reason. I don't know why. I was, you know, I just put random letters and stuff on things sometimes. Um, anyway, so yeah, so this is Opal. There's the spine on her. Okay, pretty chunky. And then here is the other uh, third book. Okay, the third book in the series. So this one was kind of the oddball. Uh, but this is Florence. And I've had this pendant for quite a while. Again, I don't know if it's vintage or not. It, it might be. I don't remember where I got it from. But anyway, I think I used to actually wear this on a chain. Um, but this really cool heart. I can't remember what they call that metal work where it looks like it's faceted, you know. I don't know if that's coming through on the camera, but it's metal, but it looks like it's got, like, rhinestones on it, you know. Anyway, and then I made these little charms a long time ago um, using the teardrop or the chandeliers, the earring chandelier pieces. Uh, I should make some more of those because those were kind of fun. Anyway, so this is one that I've had for a while. And I think I, w I did a series of like 15 journals or something and I made an extra by accident. But anyway, it's on a little clasp attached to the chain. So anyway, so this is Florence. She's, you know, her cover has some damage like <laughs> right along the bottom here. Um, you know, the... the um, the linen like peeled off but I did do some stitching around all of the covers you know all the way around all the, the edges so and that I do that a lot of times I do that just to make sure that no more damage occurs to the like the fabric that's on the book um, board you know so like if it's lifting or anything like that I like to just stitch it down so that it doesn't you know, lift any further. So, anywho. So this is, uh, who is this? Who is this? Florence. <laughs> okay. So that is my little series of special music books, uh, the Music Hour. And uh, these are already listed in my Etsy shop. So if you like any of them, um, go check them out. They do ship for free, I should say. The, the price is included. The shipping is included in the pricing. So, um, And I noticed that there are people using um, coupons that ship out, like, or that um, automatically send when you make a purchase in my Etsy shop. I don't know if I have that turned on at the moment. I think I, 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 think I actually did turn that off temporarily. For some reason, I can't remember what the reason was. I think it was because I was selling a bunch of books, like supplies or something, and I didn't want people using coupons when they were buying used books from me. But anyway, so let me know if you do get one of those coupons, okay? Because I can't tell looking at my Etsy um, promotions at the moment if that's turned on. Just let me know if you do get a coupon because um, I'd like to know if it's working. Anyway, um so that is that like I said they're all listed already and uh, I have actually won the award for being the slowest shipper on Etsy um, my shipping on time rate is something like 25% or something like that so anyways all I can do is apologize but 
I'm pretty sure you guys know you'll get your journal eventually. So anyway, I got some minis that I think I'm going to start on next week. Um, I have a couple of different ideas for some mini journals. Maybe not 25 of them like I usually do. I'm thinking maybe 12. <laughs> so anyway, okay, guys, I love you. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye for now.